how to replace the power supply module in a few steps. We show you how to do it. Before replacing the assembly, it is necessary to put on an electrostatic discharge wristband, ESD wristband. Open the housing. In the first step, you have to remove the housing cap. Loosen the four torque screws on the front cover and pull it out forwards by the handles about 5 cm. Pivot the front cover to the left until it clicks into place. Please note, the front cover must not be opened completely. Remove the assembly. Unlock the connectors on the power supply module and the input-output module by pressing the connector locks up and down. Now you have to remove the ribbon cable. Pull out the power supply module by hand. Alternatively, you could use the supplied unlocking bracket. Install the new assembly and replace the battery. Reassembling has to be done in reverse order and begins with plugging in the new assembly. When changing modules, we always recommend replacing the buffer battery on the processor module. To do this, loosen the battery cable from the plug and pull the battery out of the holder. We recommend one of the displayed battery types as a replacement battery. To install the new battery, pull the cable tie with the tab over the battery cylinder and press the new battery into the holder on the assembly. Please pay attention to the polarity of the battery, this is marked on the circuit board. Then, carefully plug the ribbon cable back onto the pin headers. Please ensure that the connector plugs are not plugged and offset. Closing the cap. The edges of the front cover have shield springs, so please pay attention when inserting and closing as well. After assembly, switch the switched off previously circuit back on and the SipperTech device will start up independently. Functional test. For the device test, connect your PC to the protection device. The connection cable requires an adapter plug on the USB interface of the PC. If the connection to the protection device is successfully established, the operating light switches from red to green. As part of the recommissioning process, check the output relays using the monitor.exe program provided on the relays delivery CD. You can see the individual steps in the following screen recording. In order to be able to use the hardware test function, add the six-digit code to the target field. 680,514. After the program has started, set up the COM interface settings. With a click on the red wrench, the COM setting window appears. In the settings window, COM, select the interface and set the baud rate to automatic. With a click on the traffic light in the command line, you start the connection to the device. If the connection is successful, the traffic light on the right turns green and the protective function of the device is deactivated. Additional setting options are available via the hardware test button. Click on the G, OK, switch command release, on, off, button, set the check mark to on. By clicking on G, OK again, you confirm the selection and done appears in the message window. Click on the K, R, E, L button and a selection window for the command relays appears. You can confirm the warning that opens with OK. You then have the option of controlling the relay either as an impulse or as a continuous signal, on OFF. If the relay control is successful, the message pass appears in the message window. Please check the correct switching function of the command relays. In the window, M, R, E, L, test the signaling relay. Use the END button to close the test function. The communication is then being interrupted and the device switches to normal operation. The green run LED appears on the protective device and the protective functions are reactivated. Alternatively, you can also carry out the relay test using the Dixie 4 test functions. After the protection device has been checked, disconnect it from the laptop. Finally, assemble the housing cap and the module replacement would now be completed.